James Heiner, do you think Seattle will pick one of the top QBs, Young, Stroud, Rattler, uh, in 2020? This is, they didn't draft one this year. Probably. Now, this assumes that Seattle's drafting early this upcoming year, but I do think you're on to some of those top QBs uh, in terms of, like, who's going to make the biggest impact there. Young, Stroud are probably the top two guys uh, in this year's in this year's class in the way too early version, since we did put Rattler in it in the way too early one last year, and that was a disaster. From Coach Carter, should the Eagles re-sign Nick Foles? <laughs> I actually don't hate that idea. They do, of course, already have uh, Gardner Minshew, who I know there is the cult following up, understandably so. They did sign Carson Strong, so I, I will put the Eagles on my list of fits for Nick Foles because. I mean, the man's a legend in Philly forever, right? Denver could use a better backup QB. I like that one. Carolina had been linked briefly by Albert Breer, so I'll throw them in there. Seattle could use a QB. I mean, is he any worse than Geno Smith? I don't think so. And the Rams, unless they really love John Wolford, Foles would be a better backup to Matthew Stafford, I believe. Now, Foles is a backup. He's, he's not going to start. That's why no one wanted to trade for him, right? But I want you to make some predictions right now. Who do you think the Cowboy or the, the who do you think will end up signing Nick Foles? Let me know right now in the comments section. From Darren, then we'll get to some super chats here. What is your opinion on Seattle's 2022 draft class? Unlike most years, I actually love what Seattle did. I thought they crushed it. I thought that draft haul for Seattle was way better than some of the more recent ones. Kenneth Walker in round two was. Of course they did, but beyond that, I thought they had some great picks. Uh, Tariq Woolen was a steal. Might be, maybe there's some medic off with something they dropped. I don't know what it was. Charles Cross and uh, Abraham Lucas, bookend starters. That was a good draft by Seattle. From all my friends, draft is over. Where does Baker Mayfield end up? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, as the draft went on, or pre-draft, I should say, five teams have been the most linked. Houston as a sleeper. Pittsburgh, if he were cut. Carolina, Seattle as trade partners, and the Falcons may be a sleeper too. But Pittsburgh took Kenny Pickett, crossed them off the list. Falcons added Desmond Ritter, crossed them off it. Carolina took Matt Corral, but they had trade talks, so I'm not going to totally rule out Carolina. I think Seattle in the end is where he ends up, but that's just the guess on a gut feeling. He could, I, don't, I don't have a great feeling in the end. What do you think? Curious what you guys have to say. Where will Baker Mayfield play in 2020? Two, make your predictions for me in the comments section. From Dom Towney, what are the floor and ceilings for Kobe Bryant, Tariq Wollin, Kenneth Walker, and Boye Mafe? Okay, I mean, the floor is they all suck, right? Like, Kobe Bryant has and Tariq Wollin are not quick enough. They get burnt on short routes and just are not comfortable at corner. Kenneth Walker can't catch, and Boye Mafe, like, doesn't develop as a pass rusher, so they all stink. The, the ceilings are... I think Tariq Wollin can be a CB2, potentially. Maybe he has the traits to be more than that. I think Kobe Bryant's in a similar mold. Wollin, the very, very tippy top, is, is even higher, but he went later, so that has to be factored in. Kenneth Walker becomes your featured back, and he's a better version of Chris Carson. And Boye Mafe grows into being in a really good edge, double-digit sack guy. Again, I like a lot of what Seattle did in this year's draft. From All Out Bronco... DK Metcalf to the Broncos for uh, for uh, Jerry Judy and picks. Who says no? They reunite DK with Russ, right? I would assume that Seattle says no. It, it depending on what your pick is, which is a problem since Denver's light on draft capital. That is maybe intriguing since you're giving up a good receiver to get a great receiver. Uh, Judy's got his own injury stuff as well. But I, if I'm Seattle, I'm, I'm not trading away DK Metcalf. He is young enough that even as I rebuild, he fits my timeline. So if I were Seattle, and as long as DK's not forcing his way out, I would simply pay him. So what would you do if you ran the Seahawks organization and you were like, DK's like, I want to get paid? What, what would you do? Would you trade him away like A.J. Brown, like Tyree Kill, like Devontae Adams? Or would you instead pay him? Let me know in the comments section. What would you do with DK Metcalf? T for trade. P for pay. This question is going to be the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get the ad break here, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. 
from James Heiner. What do you think will be the most intriguing quarterback battles once camp starts? Great questions. Or uh, question, I should say. Um, Steelers jumps out with Mitchell Trubisky against Kenny Pickett. Uh, beyond that, things are mostly settled. The Falcons, Desmond Ritter, Marcus Mariota, another good one. Whatever happens in Carolina feels like one. I, they, I, they can't enter the year with just Donald and Ritter, right? They gotta add or Donald and, and Corral. They gotta add somebody else in there. Uh, the Niners, if they keep Jimmy G, I guess that could be a competition. And whatever's gonna happen in Seattle, Drew Lock, Geno Smith, and I hope a third QB also makes sense. From Alaska, Alaskan Grown, who has the best receiving core in the NFL, in your opinion? A couple different teams really jump out. I think you have to mention the Cincinnati Bengals as one of them with Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd. Unquestionably has to be near the top of your list. Duos-wise, um, I like your your upside in uh in Philadelphia, A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith. I like what you've got going on in Minnesota, of course. Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen. It, Bucks are also super high from a depth perspective, too. Rams got some ballers with Van Jefferson, Allen Robinson, Cooper Cup, not in that order. DK and uh, Tyler Lockett. My number one, though, would be the Bucks or would be the, the Bengals with Jamar Chase, Higgins, and Boyd. Overall depth, give me the Bucks. They go like seven deep with good football players. And the Bills also, once again, have a pretty good receiving core. From Jim Panson, 84, which day three pick do you think could have an immediate pick? So there, there are going to be a lot of guys on day three that step up and play a big-time role early. Uh, I think the first three picks of day three, right? Uh, Kate Otten uh, to the Bucks, Damian Pierce to the Texans, Perrion Winfrey, all those guys could step up sooner rather than later. Uh, looking through my list here as well, I like Neil Farrell a lot. The Charlie Kohler picked I like. Technically, your kickers and punters can make a big impact, but I hate that. Calvin Austin to the Steelers, I really like that pickup in the fourth round as well. We mentioned Tyler Algier of the Falcons earlier in today's live show. He's a good fit as an early impact type of player. Those skill position players also often make their impact felt kind of quickly. Uh, I thought Jamari Salyer to the Chargers was a steal later on in the draft. That's another one if, in terms of offensive line play who could make a nice impact for you. For live shows, NFL news, rumors, and more, all season and off season long, you've come to the right spot. Hit that big red button and subscribe at youtube.com slash chatsportstv. Robbie Grusik, or Grusky, I'm getting that wrong. I'm sorry, Robbie. I know I got it right before. Uh, who do you think will be Rookie of the Year? I think Drake London was the betting favorite. Um, at least after round one, I I could see Brees Hall getting a pretty good workload. Uh, if Rashad Penny gets his uh, ne inevitable hamstring issue, I think Kenneth Walker could be a good fit there. And maybe the Saints give Chris Olave quite a bit of work. Uh, might be the route I pursue on that front. But I think L London was the early betting favorite. From Oh My Lord, who will be the first quarterback drafted next? I assume you mean year. It is way too early, and we will do some uh, some way too early mock drafts. It would be an early two-team race, I think, two-player race. Bryce Young, the Alabama quarterback, and C.J. Stroud, the Ohio State QB. Hey, maybe Spencer Rattler actually is decent under pressure next year, but it, it, these are the early favorites in what appears to be a better class than what we had this year. I say appears to be because there's an entire year of college football to be played. Changes happen. It's not by any means a locked and loaded thing. Who do you think goes first of these two? B.Y. for Bryce Young or C.J. for C.J. Stroud? From Pablo, who had the best draft? Uh, the ones that I liked the most, the Baltimore Ravens, I thought crushed it this year. I thought Philadelphia did a fantastic job as well. And I also thought that uh, the play or the draw the, the Chiefs did. Uh, those three teams in particular, among several others, all did a really good job. DCX Viper, who are your top prospects for the 2023 NFL Draft? I won't go too far in depth. We will eventually do a way too early 2023 class. Um, Jackson Smith in no order. Jackson Smith in, uh, in, in Jigba, the next great Ohio State wide receiver. Michael Mayer, tight end from Notre Dame. 
Uh, Clemson's got some good defensive ends. C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young, J Jalen Carter from Georgia, and the number one guy right now, that is Will Anderson, the edge rusher out of Alabama. He would have been the consensus number one pick this year had he been draft eligible.